Of course I have passion for my 49ers. I am not going to back down on this one. Sometimes I go extra hard just to prove my point. No, no, you don't get to have it both ways. It's head to head. It's mono e mono. It's 49ers face off. Halloween is over, but I'm still dealing with this ghost over here. And that ghoul over there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, this is going to be a fun sure. conversation. Because I'm a big the, treat. What are you talking about? You're, you're, you know, you're a trick. <laughs> Ask any girl you've ever been with. <laughs> hey, that's, that's accurate. But we have a 49ers win that we get to talk about. Oh, um, damn well, time. At some of the parts about it. So this is going to be exciting. But we have to do the coin toss. Coin you guys toss. Anything before the coin toss. Jay, Jay, is anything anything you want to you want to say? It, it's been five long weeks, man. This is yeah. You've been on a losing streak. It's <laughs> true. <laughs> That's true. He hasn't won a single face up yet. The poor guy, the poor son of a gun down there. He's been getting some votes. He hasn't Alex, get, I mean, he's, he's been getting, getting some some votes. Some votes yeah. Yes, key word there. Some. Hey, Jason's some votes. Jason's resonating with some of the fan base. All Nobody got eighty million actually won something. So. You know, there's there, there's always that. It's also that's true. Look, yeah. look. I, what I would like to say is, is that I feel very good to be here today to talk about this. You know, this win. What's going on with this team? It's nice to be able to look at this roster after a W, rather than having to look at this roster after a loss and what's going on with this football team. Um, it's a good feeling. Let's keep this up, San Francisco. Let's okay. keep doing this. I have a feeling that. The good feelings are going to be up and down. So, <laughs> I was going to say that's going to be that could change in about about five minutes, actually. Maybe. Um, probably like five seconds. Anyways, <laughs> it's coin do- coin toss time. I believe Alex called it last time. So Jason, it's your turn. Uh, what is the call, sir? I- I'm going to change up my tails. Never fails, and we're going to go heads. Ooh, that was a mistake. Okay. That was definitely a mistake. And it's heads. It so cold. it was a good move by Jason. Well Son done, sir. Son of a... So Jason, you get to decide who is going to be the the first one to go on the first topic. Oh, uh, defer. Oh, okay. So Alex, you are going to be going first. Smart play. And the big question is: Did D'Amico Ryan's overcorrect with the 49ers defensive backs because of the pass interference calls? No, he didn't overcorrect. This is exactly what they should have done. Because of the game and the situation that you had, the quarterback that you were playing against, as well as the lack of chemistry that he has developed with Robinson, with Mr. Allen Robinson over there. This was a one-off thing that I think they could do successfully one time. One time, that's it. Um, If you ask this defense to play like this against any other quarterback, especially if you have a healthy Kyler Murray this week or a Matthew Stafford in two weeks, you are going to get carved up. They're going to carve you all up. They're going to carve up this defense. They're going to carve up the secondary. I know these guys felt very confident after the game and very comfortable. Oh, we held them to 170 yards. You know, we did what we were supposed to do. We were on point all game long. The reality of the situation is, is that the only thing you were on point of was making sure that they didn't get any deep shots. That's it. That's the only thing you were on point of. You were willing to give up underneath. You were willing to let Justin Fields try and find and read the field uh, properly and accordingly. Um, You gave up certain things. The game plan this week felt like that was it. You can move the ball down the field all you want. You can get into the 20, you can get to the 30-yard line all you want. But once we get into that shortened field, Justin Fields, you're not going to have any options left. There's not going to be a whole lot for you to do other than run and make try and make plays with your feet because we're going to take away any opportunity for our defense to let you get down the field with mistakes. You're going to have to earn it. You're going to have to take it underneath. This is not the new normal. This was a one-off thing. While it wasn't the greatest thing in the world, it was the right call in the right situation for this last week. Yeah, we're, th- this is going to be probably a, a, a boring round because anyone who, who thinks that this is a, a trend, they're a complete clown. Like, this was literally just, hey, we got a, a rookie quarterback coming off an awful start. Let's not do anything to give him a ton of confidence or, or any big risks, you know. I mean, hell, they didn't even try and go deep on us. Like they did once, one time, actually twice, and once it, one ended up in an interception. Yep. Yeah, the other one was uh, vastly overthrown, extremely yeah. overthrown. Is, Sorry, I didn't want to throw a flag for in you know <laughs> inaccurate facts. Thank thank I, you for not throwing the flag. I might have missed that one when I was in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we had some Bluetooth issues on the way out to Hayward. Well, that's fair. Uh, no, 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 no. Um, it's and 
I I can't get hyped about it. I can't be excited about this. I, I can't be down about it either because it did what you had to had to do. The, 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 this was an absolute must when you had to beat the Bears, especially without Al Khalil Mack. That had to be a win. You could not have any, really any hopes of making the playoffs if you do not win the, 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 this game. So play conservative. Let them dig and dunk. Lock up when you have to. It, I mean, I I real I would have liked to have seen them be a little more stiff in the front seven because the the first four drives were, were all points and there was far too many third down conversions, which still kind of kind of haunts me. The fact that we don't do a very good job yet. And you're blaming down. the front seven. So hold on. No. Well, well yeah. See, I, you if, said this was going to be a boring first round, Jason. After that comment, this is about to get spicy. You don't put that on the fact that you had no Aziz Al Shire, Dre Greenlaw out there, and you that really were rolling helped. with one linebacker. That definitely. I mean, that that definitely, and I'm sure that'll be one one of the things that we talk about with Fred later on. But probably it's a good uh, chance. It it just like I said, it, you had to win it. So how, however you however you thought that you could achieve the win, get the win, and get the hell out of Chicago and get ready. Well, Arizona. let me ask both of you because you know I both I disagree with both of you on this. Oh, okay. um, really? Yeah. So let me ask you this: So you just talked about third down conversions and yes. that being a real problem in the game. However, you don't want them to play tough coverage. You want them to play soft. Um, isn't that really what's going on? They played soft. They gave up third down conversions because they didn't want defensive pass interference. So didn't they in fact over correct? Over uh, correct. I'm not sure. I, see, see, I, I don't necessarily agree with the term over correct. I, I. Okay, well then, give me a term that you do agree with. I, I think they were cautious. Okay, overly cautious. But, well, there has to be an overly because you're not just cautious if you're giving up that many third down conversions. But well, that, what, but the Bears don't exactly have a, mm. have somebody who can get over the top on you. Uh, and that's not true. Darnell Mooney, Darnell Allen, Mooney is Allen one of the Robinson, fastest dudes. Both, both he, can do that. Um, but, I broke down Darnell Mooney last. The draft. Bears, Marquise Goodwin. He he. he to be on our Olympic team. That's about all, all he, well, he all long good jumped for. right past Emmanuel Mosley for a pivotal third down conversion. He did. It's true. Mosley didn't uh, touch him. Mosley. Hey, hey, so this is this is where I, I'm going to differ with you on this, Ant. Because okay. you say overcorrect. Um, overcorrection for me in this, the way that, that you're using the word here, would be if their intention was to not allow Justin Fields to have anything underneath. Um, no, my intention it, was that they didn't allow any. They didn't want these defenders to get any defensive pass interference. So in fact, they overcorrected to prevent those things from happening. But if you know what the if you know what the trade off is, and and I think we all know that D'Amico Ryan's understood what the trade off was, and that Kyle Shanahan understood what the trade off was, right? Which is if you play that soft and that much over the top, that you're going to allow them to convert on third, third downs, 12, mm -hmm. right? 14, you're going to you're going to allow eights. those things to yeah. happen. If you're willing to make that trade off for one game because you're putting the onus on a rookie quarterback, knowing that when you get down into shorter distances and shorter yardage fields, it becomes that tougher. you can now right stiffen up a little bit and hopefully only give up maybe one or two touchdowns throughout the game and put but the onus on the you were losing this football game because of that. I'm aware that you were losing this football game because of that, but again, they, they put the onus on the offense for one game to get it done. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I don't know if it was so much an overcorrection as it was intentional. And if there was one game where you could do this and get away with it, 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 was, it was this game. game. Absolutely. It was this game. Yeah. This can't. It's not a recipe for success. I don't know, though, if it was an overcorrection per se, Mr. Official. Oh, 100% was an overcorrection, so okay. both of you get a penalty on I'd like to throw. <laughs> I'd like to throw a flag <laughs> on the official. It's, it's uh, me and Alex versus, against the official. The here. This is great. And somehow I feel like you guys. We got two flags on the play. <laughs> That's crazy. It is two on one, and somehow I feel you are both outmanned. Uh, incorrect. You were completely wrong in that this scenario. Mr. I can take both of you on in a two-on-one handicap match any time of the week. Uh, it's called um, a steel chair. Uh, it's called say. a steel chair. Hey, I've had a steel chair to the head. I'll, I'll get my kendo it. stick and watch out, boy. Oh, yeah. my goodness gracious. I'm, I'm <laughs> Why am I not surprised I'm that he has worried. a kendo stick? I'm not worried about his kendo stick. <laughs> oh, big yikes, Ant. Big yikes. Uh, let's, let's, go to the, let's go to the next topic. Speaking of tricks? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, um, but in your case, tricks are for kids. Oh. Uh, that sounds illegal now. <laughs> I'm talking look. about the cereal. Where are you going? Get your mind out of the gutter. Come on now, Jason. Oh, I'm into like a this is a family-friendly show. So, Jason, you're going to kick off the next topic. Yes, I am. And we're going to be Boom. talking about the run defense. Mm -hmm. Is the 49ers run defense in trouble without big Javon Kinlaw? The run defense has been a concern for a couple years now. I mean, even we had everyone's beloved DeForest Buckner. 
the run defense was still not that great. Like that dude got moved around all the time. And so now that the guy who replaced him, the anchor up the middle that we're supposed to have can't stay healthy with knee issues and watching that really garbage Chicago Bear offensive line just opening up holes for Herbert over and over and over again had me a little frustrated, had me a little worried because hmm. uh, hmm. he gouged us pretty, I mean, he, he thankfully he didn't gouge us as bad as we, as we gouged them, Elijah, but man, it, it wasn't like you know, he was getting getting, you know, two yards here. It was getting eight yards there, six yards here, twelve yards there. In the first half. Yeah. Well, the the first half, yes. I I, I will say that the second half, the defense looked a lot better. Yeah, accurate. So whatever D'Amico and his staff got in on to do in the second half, especially versus the run game, definitely helped. But the first half, True. man. True. It 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 was concerning me. It was definitely a, a concern. And I don't I think that, and uh, well, hell, our the main of the game, we were fifth against the pass, which is kind of funny because we give up a bunch of PIs, but and we were twentieth against the run. So the run defense is definitely not up there with the pass defense, and it didn't, especially in the first half, it, it looked very suspect. I I don't know what to do. Because I don't know if there's anybody in a, up who, who can play defensive tackle who can help fortify that that, that that we have on our roster yet. It's it's a concern. The 49ers run defense is in trouble until Dre Greenlaw returns. That's that's where I'm willing to go with this. That's 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 as far as I'm willing to go with the struggle aspect of this. The 49ers run defense. Whenever they're, they've been asked to be in base 4-3 sets and have run fits with the linebackers, being able to come up in space, it's been a problem. Um, Remind me how it went with the Detroit Lions week one. Oh, we with, had an, Drake with, an un, with an unhealthy Drake Greenlaw. Very interesting no, that you chose no. that. Yes, 100%. He played. Playing with a muscle core injury that he re-injured on the pick six. He, I would say he was healthy enough to get a, a pick six, but the first couple possessions, the... The Lions were gouging us pretty good there, too. Gouging? Gouging? Yeah. I thought the Lions got up to a pretty big lead in that football game. The Lions missed, offense wasn't doing a whole lot until late in the football game. But, hey, a couple, you know, your definition of gouging, my missed, definition of gouging, tomatoes, zebras, the same thing. A couple field it's totally goals. the same they thing. a couple field goals. Look, a good here's, here's the reality of the situation. Around. Javon Kinlaw is a very important piece on the front. And week one, you didn't have Javon Kinlaw, and there were some issues. When Javon Kinlaw is in there, not as many issues. Uh, Javon Kinlaw plays a very important role in terms of consistency versus the run because he wins versus double teams. However, however, this is a big however, with all three linebackers back, you can change up your fronts, you can change up your looks. When teams decide to go two tight end sets and really load up to run the ball, the 49ers can walk a linebacker down, show a five-man front, and now you have two linebackers in space where, okay, outside zone is now accounted for and covered. You don't have to worry about necessarily getting guys out and flowing downhill as much. You can send them a little bit more downhill, which frees up guys like Jimmy Ward and Jaquiski Tart too when they're healthy to have big opportunities to get isoed up in space instead of having to fight off blocks. Palano Hufanga, a guy who's shown that he can operate very well in the box as well now, can have more he success. Well, actually. Yes. Um I don't think the I don't think the run game, the run defense is as, as in much trouble as people want to believe it is. I think the addition of Dre Greenlaw will definitely help out to an extent. Um, it's just going to come down to the rotation and guys winning versus double teams because double teams now are going to become more apparent than ever on run fits, especially against Contavia Street and Kevin Givens, who are at times susceptible to getting blown back in space. Uh, the only nice news is, is that Fred Warner is not going to get beginning as many looks, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, having this entire linebacking core back in base four three sets is going to make this 49ers team much more formidable against the run. Maybe we're still worse. giving up some yards, and maybe we're still giving up some conversions, but it won't be as significant. You won't see as many seven or eight yard gashes on first downs, which now puts teams in second and longers, third and potentially even longers, and gives the 49ers even better opportunities to be more aggressive late in drives, late in series, to get themselves off the football field. Um, Jason, question for yes. you. Because um, I think, what, Herbert <laughs> ended up with, what, about 79 yards? 
Somewhere, somewhere like that. But so do, do you feel like th that is still years. the issue or was it the fact that it was Herbert and Fields? Was that the big issue for you? Because I know Fields went for over 100 yards. Right? Fields running didn't really bother me because I'm so used to us having a hard time containing mobile mm -hmm. quarterbacks that that is, is what it is. Um, and a lot of times... You know, I mean, he made the smart play when, when there was nobody covered. He took off and ran. So that's more scramble. Yeah, yeah. That's why we drafted. You know, Trey to have have that same same ability too. So that's. I mean, I can't fault fault that. That's what he what he did at, at Ohio State too. So so you're not concerned about the run game then, because in the second half, Khalil Herbert rushes for like. He also got hurt and fifteen yards after the, he the, the after back. he went out with that injury. He, he was not the same guy though. Well, I'll also point out and he was getting tackled in the backfield for losses, guy. Well, Jason was Jason was talking about what the adjustment Demico Ryan's played, and I'll tell you what he did is he went away from the wide nine a little bit, and they brought their two defensive ends in, which actually gave Justin Fields the opportunity to get outside more. Yeah, outside. Um, and they stopped the run a lot better with you know it, putting those defensive ta or defensive ends in better situations, but not in the nine, but they were in like the seven or eight depending on where they were lined up. So they did adjust. Is that adjustment going to be good enough against like an Arizona? Or if it's Colt McCoy, can the 49ers just sit in the wide nine? If it's Colt, then then absolutely. Okay. Like that's that's fine. And, and by the way, if, if it is Colt, that damn sure has to be a win. That absolutely that that becomes a, a must win. We cannot do what the, the Minnesota Vikings, thank God, did last night. We cannot lose to a backup backup quarterback. That would be. Abby yeah, the same thing Tom Brady did as well, right? Yep. Brady lost to the Saints. Well, yeah, but I mean, third what, what about what about the, so the you... Jets also winning with a backup quarterback? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, what about your Bengals, man? What about those Bungles? Uh, Joe was... Burrow, man, what a stud. He... Wow, LSU uh, North lost. <laughs> <laughs> he played pretty. I mean, he he wasn't. Oh good. yeah, he, he played, played quarterback. He wasn't bad trying. though. Yeah, he wasn't bad. It wasn't no, it wasn't terrible. bad. But you know, for so so would rather. We'd rather have him than Jimmy, but yeah, you know. Okay, well, we're gonna we're about to That's get fine. to Jimmy, uh, and, and Alex is gonna kick this one off because we want to talk we about go. Jimmy, and and Jason is getting pumped up for this. I, I'm shocked. Uh, our resident Twitter guy, um, <laughs> 2017 is is 2017 Jimmy back, or was this game just a flash in the pan, Alex? It feels like he's back. It really does. Oh the dear God, the confidence is there. <laughs> oh wow, the aura, the aura was back. The way he operated, stood in the pocket, threw with guys in his face. And the read option. Yeah, great. Ran the read option. Mm -hmm. Controlled the offense, the flow of the offense, the motion into Debo when Alex Mack is making an adjustment at the line and is late on the snap, holds holds Debo up. Kyle not calling timeouts in certain situations where before you would see him burn timeouts to get them into better sets and instead of letting Jimmy try and make plays and, and have opportunities. Kyle not calling a timeout um, in the last two minutes of the, of the first look, half. All, yeah. I'm, all I'm saying is, Real trusting. I mean, you don't want to give the Bears the ball with time left on the clock and an opportunity to go down with three timeouts and or two timeouts and put more points up on the board when the offense hasn't been able to punch one in the end zone. But hey, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah okay, whatever, Jason. Not being, not Look, being the reality of the situation is is that Jimmy made the throws he needed to make this this last game. He did so at times with guys in his face. He did so at time going to guys that he needed to go to. Uh, distributed the ball around to a lot of different receivers, Brandon Ayuk, back, Brandon and Ayuk. him getting on the same page as well in the scramble drill. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo looked like the guy that we saw back in 2017 that everyone was so high on, that everyone thought, you know, hey, if this this is the guy we just traded for, holy cow, man, this this is this is next level. This team Find is set up. and good to go. Good to go, yeah. And that Jimmy Garoppolo had a chip on his shoulder, right? He had something that he was trying to prove. He had something that he was trying to to show the world, right? Like, hey, I was behind Tom. You know, I, I sat and waited my turn. I sat and waited my time. I got asked basically to leave and got sent somewhere else. And now it's my opportunity to show everybody how wrong they were. He's got a very similar situation here right now. The Niners went and drafted a young man. This team has been reeling. A lot of people feel like it's been on the quarterback. The team's back is against the wall. His back is against the wall. You know, he knows he's a loss or two away from this team being irrelevant in the playoff picture and him being irrelevant as a quarterback for this team or being irrelevant as a quarterback in the league in general. And he's got everything to prove, right? At this point, he has literally nothing to lose because if this team goes off and 
you know, fades off into the distance and becomes irrelevant for the season, then Jimmy Garoppolo becomes irrelevant as the starting quarterback. His career potentially becomes irrelevant as a opportunity to start throughout the league. So yes, Kirk Cousins is still is still starting. There's there'll be hope hope for Jimmy still. You you think so? You think so? I mean, yeah. you really do. But you you don't know in the NFL. Any anything could happen on any given week, month, year. How teams feel about quarterbacks changes week in and week out. Sam Darnold was you know the darling of the NFL through three weeks, and now is looking like the old Sam Darnold he, again. He played um, well. He, 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 played, he played well yesterday. Thank okay, you very much. Well, congratulations. He played well on a, on a Sunday. Yeah. Yay. Right on. Did well, they still lose? No, they won. No, well, they finally win a game. Good job. Good job. And, and actually, that was a good game too <laughs> because whoever lost that game would would help us out too. Now the the four and four Panthers are sitting in that last playoff spot. And by God, you cannot tell me that they're not that they are a better team than we are. So no, that was good. I, that, I, I agree. I, I agree really thought that yesterday's results in terms of us. Getting back into the, to the playoff mix, if we can win one of these next two games, mm-hmm. it fell about as perfectly as it could have fallen for us. And you can thank Jimmy Garoppolo for 300 plus yards and two rushing touchdowns and yeah. tapping into the 2017 version yeah. of what he was. He could be coming. He, we we could be seeing a, a reemergence of of that the version man. of Jimmy. That's all I'm saying. It's definitely there. It exists somewhere deep down. Been been missing. Far too long. Um, no, folks. Let's let, let's remember that probably the maybe the best player in that entire game yesterday did not play. And Nick Bosa was on the field, guy. I, like I said, maybe the best player because yeah, Nick Bosa Will was Mack on the is, field. Will Mack is pretty good still. Yeah, Will he Mack, is. He's right. He's still phenomenal. Yeah, he's still um, at Robert Quinn. Yeah, but when we can kind of focus on one of those guys. Jimmy 2017. What was it really? Was it a, a flash in the pan itself? And is this the, the real Jimmy that we've seen the last year and a half, two years plus? I don't or, know. He built on 2017 with that 2019 season, so you tell me. I don't, I don't, no, he really didn't. Oh, no, you're right. We didn't make a Super Bowl. No, he, he wasn't the quarterback for that team. No, Once again, up, as we he didn't put up 900 passing yards. No, we, he didn't do any of those things. As we talked about. No, nah, you're right. He didn't do nothing. He wasn't a top 10 quarterback in the league that year. Who ride. Ride the bus. There's, there's quarterbacks who drive the bus. Jimmy did not drive the bus for us in the Super Bowl. That was our defense and our, our run game. Thank you very much. Now, Jimmy, as far as this one game, man, he was good. He should have been over 400 yards if if Debo could have caught a couple. New had had a had a big drop too. Mm-hmm. He played great. <clears throat> Probably the best game that he's played all year. That or maybe Detroit. No, nah, this one for sure. Yeah, you can go this either one, way. This one for sure. You can go either way. Mm. But is this a trend? Is this a page turning? Or was it just he's back home? He's a little extra motivated because he's playing in front of friends and family. He's he's playing a, a defense that doesn't really have any good corners. It doesn't really have any good linebackers except for Roquan. And that's that's missing. Apparently, it. Danny Trevathan is garbage. Apparently, Alec Ogletree is garbage. I didn't say garbage. I just said that Roquan is 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 by far their best linebacker. Well, they employ four, so yeah. Robert Quinn is also a linebacker. Garbage. Khalil Mack. Garbage. Khalil Mack. Yeah. Good, good play, linebacker though. core overall. Khalil Mack, Robert Quinn. This defense Roquan is not. Smith, this and de- Danny Trevathan. This defense is good. not garbage. I mean, it, anyone who says this defense is terrible, I mean, what? What? what, what I will are you give you this. Their no corners name are corners. trash. I'll give you that. No name corners. 100%. No name corners. I don't know about trash, Jason. I don't, I don't know about trash. The corners are garbage. No name. Yes. Garbage? Mm. Yeah. And How do you win three football games with trash, garbage corners? Really good front seven. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Very true. But Jason doesn't think the linebackers are good, so. Mm-hmm. So, not, uh, they're they're not great. so an okay so, front if, four? If they're not great, then that means Khalil Mack isn't as impactful as you just said. Because he's a linebacker. He's a, But he's, he's a rush linebacker, not a... Um, they run a 3-4, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. He rushes exactly. And okay, so sometimes he's, he's drops a, out. He's a rusher. He's not a linebacker. I'm gonna look at the depth chart on ESPN. I'm gonna see rusher, and it's gonna say Khalil Mack. Khalil Mack, extra <laughs> extraordinary rusher. I, I'm not giving you too much, Kyle. I'm just saying, dude. Linebackers. He is, he's considered a linebacker. Okay. He's a linebacker, but it, by default linebacker. But he, he he's not going out 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 in pass coverage. And he I mean his, his job. He will sometimes. He will. It's own yeah. What, what? He I mean, is, it's just it's. He funny, is man. a rush linebacker. 
It's funny. He's like Alden Smith. His job is to go get the D quarterback. 100%. It's, it's funny right. because people said D Ford couldn't play in our system because he was a 3-4 three, uh, three, outside linebacker with the Chiefs. True. I never said that. I know, I know you didn't. didn't. We're just having a little fun with it, Jason. Just, it's just, it's just... I, was, I was excited as hell that we actually got a D Ford in. I, I think that we saw him, his absence, once again, it, it, not, not, not ideal when, when he doesn't play. I don't disagree with you but on that. But back to Jimmy yeah, Garoppolo. Yeah, go back to Jimmy. I was Please, back, back to Jimmy Garoppolo. Please. Okay. One off. He has one or two good games a year. The rest of the games, he's either oh, inconsistent mm. or he's slightly above average. Mm, okay. He was great on Sunday. Mm. Let's see what he does against Arizona. Let's see what he does the week after that. First, Von Miller, Aaron Donald, Jalen Ramsey, and that defense. All right, let's just pump the brakes here. He doesn't suck. He's not. He's not going to Canton tomorrow. Like no, who's saying, off, who's saying he's going off, to Canton tomorrow? Off this performance, he played great. He did it what he had to do. He was actually accurate. He actually threw the ball down the field a little bit, which was exciting to see. He actually even hit a couple passes outside the numbers. Which which is like I almost had a heart attack. I, I was so, so sure. I actually got the ball to I to Ayuk and and when the ball's in his hands, he's just different. His his his, his short area quickness. This this week, his agility. You're, you're right. This week for sure. I still it still pisses me off that we don't get in the ball more than we do. And he, are you one of those guys? Are you really one of those Brandon Ayuk guys that thinks they just not they've just been not getting him the football? No, I no, I no, I'm just saying that he needs to have the ball in his hands more. He he even did a pretty good job back there returning the punts too. Man, so hey, hold on. So then let me ask you this, Jason. Go ahead. Let's let's see if the consistency's there. Probably was not. the Brandon Ayuk's <laughs> was Brandon Ayuk's game today? Is it the flash in the pan? Or is this the return of Ooh. Brandon Ayuk to what we saw last year? Well, I would say that Guy? it's what we saw. It's not a flash in the pan because we saw. Oh, it's not a flash in the pan for Brandon Ayuk, but it is for Jimmy Garoppolo. Because we saw him with way worse quarterbacks last year put up pretty good, pretty darn good numbers. So, so now he has a supposedly much better quarterback mm -hmm. and Jimmy Garoppolo. So he, he should be doing a lot. A lot better, but Debo Samuel is uh, on. Debo up Samuel, until Debo up Samuel, until Debo Samuel through eight through seven games has, has more receiving yards than than Jerry Rice. Record, I know. So so just keep it shut. No, that's, keep it shut. That's fine, but keep that, it shut. Stay consistent, Jason. I am. No, you're not. You're being the How? exact opposite of How? consistent. How? Because Brandon Ayuk has done nothing for six weeks because Brandon Ayuk has not been executing or playing at the level that He's Brandon been in the Ayuk played house. Oh. last year. No, it has nothing to do with the doghouse. Brandon Ayuk doesn't win versus, man cover, win versus man he coverage. He wasn't winning consistently, and when he did win consistently, or other guys were missing him. Either that was Jimmy, Jimmy or Trey. was missing him. Thank you. Because no, 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 Jimmy no, no, locks no, 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 on no, 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 Jimmy locks on Debo, just like we saw last week. False. Really? Incorrect. I swear that he threw a pick. In triple coverage, because he to locked Debo. on Debo. That's one. When so congratulations, Jason. You, you named one right? play. It's You've named uncovered. one play through six games of the season. I'm sure you made a wonderful point on one play, Jason. I'm sure we can find a one lot more. play. Uh, there's a, there's one difference between you and I. I've watched the old right. 22 film. No, and you <laughs> sit there and watch the, the the game, and you hear everyone else talk about it, and no. you form your opinions based on what everyone else tells you to no, think. No, that's, no, that's what's that's, going on, and that's okay. That's entirely, You're allowed to think that way and false. be that way, Jason. Entirely but false. the reality of the situation is apologist. that Brandon Ayoub hasn't won consistently. He doesn't win consistently, number one. Number two, when he does win, it's because Kyle Shanahan has schemed open an opportunity for him, and an O-lineman misses, misses a block. Ross Dwelly screws the pooch somewhere. Your goal excuses. Mike McGlinchey doesn't hit on somebody, or one of the two quarterbacks that's been in at the time has not recognized and seen that he was open in space. So... Those are what's led to this situation. You're... But they can find Debo all the time, though. That's because Debo is always open. A always open. So is there is very rarely a situation. Too. Actually, that's not true. On the All-22 film, Mohamed Sanu is inconsistent, but he does win at times, and when he wins, more often than not, Jimmy finds him. That's that's what's happened this year. That's the, the reality of the situation. So I I, I just the inconsistency drives inconsistent. me nuts with this Brandon Ayuk thing because you do see someone who's winning out there on the outside in Devo Samuel who is thriving because he's consistently winning we in every matchup. Consistently give the ball to one guy. I agree with you, which is why Brandon needs to step up. But it's also why I'm not willing to sit here and say, hey. Brandon Ayuk completely returning to form. I think he's getting there slowly but surely. I it's think this start. was a step in the right direction. It's a big start. Which is why I'm saying the same thing about Jimmy Garoppolo. 
right? This is a step towards him becoming more and more like that guy we saw back in 2017 I don't who think, knew, I don't think he can get who there, knew deep down, right, that he had something to prove. He had that aura about him. He had seen it all. He's been through it all. He's a weathered, seasoned quarterback in this football league who's been through the ringer, has seen a lot of different things, and has learned from one of the greatest of all times and is ready to take the world and show everybody, right, that he was he's that not guy. just a backup. No, no. That guy still exists deep Where down. Where has he been and for we just four saw years? Doesn't matter. We, for four years. For four years? 2018, 2019, 2020. Uh, he was uh, he was hurt uh, for, for uh, two of those uh, seasons. So yeah. what are you talking about? 2019, we went That's to the Super still Bowl four years. with him as the quarterback? That's still four years. Uh, two the guy two of the saw. four years that you just talked about. He had a great finish in 2017. 2019, we went to the freaking Super Bowl. What are you on about, Not guy? Not by him. Oh my God! Like I said, he rode in the bus. Hey, did was not Nick Mullins taking bus. us to a Super Bowl in 2019? What? The, what the hell's the matter with Nick Mullins? No, no. He, was Nick Mullins taking us to a Super Bowl in 2019? Nick Mullins could be easily one of those. Was Nick Mullins games. answer the question? Was he Nick Mullins won those taking games. us to the Super Bowl in 2019? He could, he, he could have won those playoff games. Yeah, you're a clown. Because you're a clown. We didn't use uh, a quarterback. We, we hey, 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 hey guy, hey guy. In 2020, when Nick Mullins was the quarterback and had to get us in that of run plays and check us in and out, and we were running tosses to DNs that were lined up five yards outside for five-yard losses? Right. Was Nick Mullins winning his football games then? Was he getting did, us in and out of the right play calls and making sure that we were when we were running the football, we were Ree running Mostert? into the right box so that we had did the box to run to? Ree was he doing those, yes or no? Did he have Ree Mostert? He it, did for a part of the season. Jason, not, answer me. This is about 2019, so yes. you could establish it. Um, so what was wrong with Jimmy Garoppolo's performance? He had almost 4,000 yards in that season, You know, put up pretty good numbers. What is it that you feel wasn't good enough to be him for him to be a... Super Bowl caliber quarterback. When the chips were down, when the game absolutely had to, had to have a play made, he got antsy. He got jumpy. He he, he stopped seeing the field. He missed Kittle. He over to Sanders. He had a terrible fourth quarter in the biggest game of the year. He melted down in the fourth quarter. Pure and simple. So you're has Tom Brady has his, Tom has Tom so, Brady ever done that in a Super Bowl? In the fourth quarter, no. Absolutely, he no, has. he has not. Absolutely, he has. When, please. Absolutely, he has. Which one of the nine that he's played in and and the 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 six that that he's won did, did he melt down in the fourth? I mean, pretty sure the the loss to the Eagles is a perfect no, example of it. No, yeah, they didn't yeah. they didn't punt one time that game. They may not have punted one time. They had one turnover. He didn't he, make throws when he needed he to make. This, he, he missed said, on guys that he shouldn't have missed on. I mean, that's what Super you're, you're, Bowl record. You harp you harp on it. Yards. You're sitting here Super, harping on guys Super, missing. Super Bowl guys, record. Guys are human. Bowl, guys miss. Super Bowl guys miss. record for passing yards. Guys miss, man. Threw for over five hundred yards. Guys miss. Yards. Guys miss. Jason. Hundred yards. Guys miss. That happens sometimes. He scored. He, Jimmy also had a big scored. throw to George Kittle that got wiped out by a pass interference call in the first half. Yeah, that that was led to points and made the game completely different. Jimmy doesn't a need to make goal. throws if that doesn't happen. Oh, well, you don't know for sure it would have been a field. You're guessing. Time wise, it probably would have been. You're guessing. You're saying. You're guessing again. I'm. I'm reasoning. You're reasoning. Yeah. I'm uh, reasoning that you can't make a throw to Emmanuel Sanders when you have someone hit you in the face. Also that too. He sure did. She sh and then do he you got, not do you not think that Jimmy Garoppolo had a concussion at the end of that game from a, the earlier hit where he got absolutely demolished in the face? He probably did. Isn't that couldn't that contribute to his fourth quarter inconsistency? It could have. Okay, I'm it, just saying since we're gonna we're gonna throw out possibilities. Look, if all, he had all, one. All I'm all I'm oh, saying is all, all I'm saying is Jason is that you need to have some consistency with this. Uh, I've been Jimmy. very consistent. He's a, he's a good quarterback. <laughs> yeah, you've he's not great. You've been consistent that he's not. The, the 2017 version doesn't exist anymore. That guy's it dead and gone, right? And that Brandon Ayuk, last year's version of him, 100% exists based on what exactly? Uh, like gonna, I said, I'm gonna four catches. Oh, are you throwing a flag? Uh, no, I'm going to clarify. I do believe Jason is being consistent. About how inconsistent uh, about, he is. No, he's being consistent <laughs> on the fact that he doesn't think the Jimmy Garoppolo from 2017 exists anymore. True. He didn't exist in 2019. He doesn't exist now. Gotcha. That is his stance. Um, so that, that way we're clarified on that is his consistent okay. statement. So his consistent statement is just wrong. Got it. That, that, that's fine. Yeah. You, no, I'm just saying, just I, I think okay. we've established that that's what, right. That's what your belief is. Okay. 2017, Jimmy doesn't exist anymore. He that didn't guy, exist in 2019. That, he doesn't right. Exist now. That's, no. what, that's what it is. He was, that guy just, he had, he had a presence about him in 17 that, that I have not seen in the pocket since. I, I have not seen, period. Okay. Like that, that guy was on the verge of becoming some, some special. I was giddy o over it because 
He was hitting guys in stride, hitting guys on time. He still hits guys in stride. And hits oh, guys no, in no, time. no, 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 no. Holy no. cow. It's like we don't even watch the same game. Yeah, I know. My I, lord. I, how, how many times my do, do lord. we see receivers going like this or like this? You're right. What game are you watching? This was my question. Very rarely do you see him throw guys behind. Very rarely do you see him throw guys super high. Can we throw a flag on that? that that's, um, he, he, that's ludicrous. Okay. I'll, I'm being consistent. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say this. He does throw balls behind. He does throw balls high. He does throw balls in rhythm. He does all three. Also, there are other context things. He's throwing around defenders. He's throwing the receivers into positions where they should Guys be. are typically um, running those still. Those things are true. And then there's sometimes he just flails and throws the ball too high or he throws it too far outside. All things that we're talking about can all be correct. Right? But some we have things to have context. Than, some things, also, more, it, some yeah. things more than others. Yeah. I think some, I mean, like, Sanu had to jump, for, or was it, it was, I think it was Sanu jumped Sanu for a ball. Sanu had to jump for game. a ball, hasty, and, hasty but it wasn't on that his. Bad. Like, it, that's a throw that if Aaron Rodgers make it, no one bats an eye. But because it's Jimmy Garoppolo, oh, it's a high football. Yep. Right? Don't you think that's actually accurate, J Jason? That, yeah, that's, that's fair. But, but, the, but, but that, that also comes uh, but, with but, the territory of, uh, but, right, because being a Hall of, uh, being a right. Hall of, him quarterback versus being a guy well, it, that right because in the same good. in the same category that the one you brought up earlier with where he throws a Debo, take out Debo Samuel's name, take out Jimmy Garoppolo's name, put in Aaron Rodgers and uh, Devontae Adams, and he he ignores Muhammad Sanu and he goes to Devontae Adams. Does anyone talk about it the next day? No. Okay. I, I'm just I, I didn't think nope. you would think so either, but I was just no. curious what your thoughts were on that. You know, but you're right. He's earned it, right? Aaron Rodgers has earned that respect. That hey, I'm going to go. Do, and Devontae Adams is the I best do receiver. Agree with so that. there you go. I, got I do. It. I do agree. I think we can bridge the gap there, Jason. I no, think we can bridge. The I, gap and there. I, I love Debo, but, but there's just there's a shiftiness and uh, make you miss that, 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 that Brandon has that that Debo doesn't have. Oh God. What Debo has oh, is God. is. You run your butt over. Oh God! That that he he. That and we need to end, the, Mr. Official. We need to we'll, end this we'll segment to, right we'll now before save, I put this table. We'll, we'll I'm gonna save, put this table and come right over there, Jason. Hey, we will we will save Devo, Brandon, and Ayuk discussion for the next episode. So if you are ready for face off uh, next week, we'll have that one. Oh God! But we got to get to the drive right now because we need to talk about Fred Warner. Okay. Time um, for the drive. drive, Jason. Since you won the toss, you get to decide who's gonna go first in the drive. Is it gonna be you or is it gonna be J you're gonna go first? Wow. Okay, Jason. Why? Why is Fred not having the season everyone thinks he's having? First of all, I don't think he's having a bad year. Like I, I don't understand the people who say that, that he's having a terrible year. He, like we talked about earlier, he doesn't have, he hasn't had Dre Greenlaw for the whole year. He, he and Al Zaire Shahar, I can never say his name. It's Al Shahir. I can never say his name right. It's one of those. One of those he's Al Shahir. One of those really weird names. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> he. Has been in and out of lineup too. Now, so what? What that's had and what that's had to to do for Fred is that they've had to kind of move him around a little bit and take him out of the space where he can make those explosive, game changing type plays. When they're all back and healthy, and they get kind of reacclimated to D'Amico's style, then I fully expect that Fred will return to the splash explosive. Plays that we we we've all become to expect out of him. Not a problem here, folks. Look, I think you and I agree, Jason. I think we definitely agree on what's going on with Fred Warner. However, I disagree with your take and your assertion and your notion that it's because he's being moved around and asked to play in different spots and new areas. No, they're asking Fred Warner to be Fred Warner and the middle linebacker for this football team. What's actually happening is, is that teams are able to focus on Fred Warner. That, it's that simple. I was like, Aziz Al Shair. You get me messing up his name now. Congratulations. Thank you for that. Aziz Al Shair <laughs> has been playing phenomenally, but it's because teams have been forcing him to play phenomenally. He's not asked to fight through as many blocks out in space. They're putting Aziz in positions where he has to flow downhill, make the right read, get to the right spot, and either close down a cutback lane or shoot the gap at the right time and make a play in the backfield. Fred's having to deal with double teams coming up into him in space. Teams sending additional blockers to account for Fred Warner. And last this last week specifically is the same sort of thing. They're doing everything possible to slow down Fred. And Fred's doing everything he can right now to eat that stuff up and make sure that they free up that space. Once you get Dre Greenlaw back, Fred Warner is going to feast. Absolutely feast. He has to. Okay, you have heard the arguments. You have heard the drive. Who is victorious? Was it Alex? 
Was it Jason? Let us know in the comment section down below. Who are you agreeing with on these topics? Do you agree with one on one topic, one on the other? Go ahead and go with that as well. You can agree accord. Or True. maybe in the first topic, you don't agree with either one of them and you agree with me. <laughs> uh, that is okay as well. Be a, that'd be a big mistake. It'd be a huge mistake. Yeah, don't yeah. Do it. Why would you agree with the official who's usually right? I don't know, man. I've been watching the officials this year in the NFL. They've thrown a lot of unnecessary yellow flags in. Yeah, but I'm not a paid official. The NFL, hey, I'm a paid official. What of about that NFL faceoff or that, face that off, obvious true. misholding too on Jawan Jennings? Oh, that was bad. That yeah. was really bad. That was, that was bad. Was, was, was he had terrible. he had full jersey. And turn almost makes my argument that maybe the 49ers overcorrected. They could have played the same way on defense and just been no one open. The officials, no, we, we all know we they all only know. call it against us, though. exactly. If, That's if bad. you got that red and gold out there, they automatically throw that flag okay. if they think of a uh, catch a whiff of hand near somebody. Agree to disagree. They, hey, hey, we have got to beat Arizona, like, there, there, there's just no other, especially if, if no Kyler and agreed, like yeah. that, agreed that. That would be a devastating loss mm -hmm. if there's no Kyler and they come in into Levi's and which, by the way, we've not won a home game in a long time. It's been a little bit. Uh, it's going on almost well, it's, a, it, a full year now. It depends. When's where's home? Arizona, Santa Clara. That's true. also that's also true too. <laughs> true. I'm confused. Where home is. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Santa Clara County, for all, hey, all, hey. all that help. Home is where the heart is. So candle, well. candlestick then? That was that's still <laughs> what we're at. For some people, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so for some, it's Kizar. Kizar, also true. <laughs> also true. Yeah. Look, we hope you enjoyed this 49ers face-off. No matter how spicy it gets, it's always nice to talk about different opinions and figure Trip, out please. where everyone's out. Figure, figure out where everyone's at, not out. Um, and just kind of come to an understanding on this football team because at the end of the day, uh, you know, Jason and I may not agree. Uh, Jason and I and Ant, Mr. Official, may not agree, but we all want the same thing, which is 49ers dubs. That's, that's the, true. That's the most important thing. We can't thing. agree on that, right, Jason? Absolutely. Okay, good. Well, thank God. At least he's Jason not. Jason hasn't went down that road <laughs> yet. He's not that <laughs> deep he's into the Twitter. Else. He's a couple losses away from, we just need to lose out. We don't have a, a first round pick now, so there you no go. point. Win all as right. many games as we you gotta win. Yeah. I like it, yeah, Jason. Make the Dolphins, yeah, Dolphins pick later. Good. It's sure. going to go, go get them Sean Watson eventually, but. Good. It could. Yeah. Look, we hope you enjoyed this. Comment down below about all of it, like Ant said earlier. And uh, don't forget to head on over to Patreon as Tell well. You got big yikes. You got uh, 49ers Cutback in Times. You got all 22 film breakdowns coming your way. And a big week you for me and my Madden playthrough. That they missed. A huge week this week in my Madden playthrough, as yeah. well as this Friday, a live Madden fantasy draft. Ooh. The Madden League starts this Friday, so a lot of good stuff going Guess on what, over there. Guess what, folks? Me and Alex went head to head this week at we fantasy did. football. We did. I took him out. He did. Because what can I say? I'm always right. Uh, no, he just <laughs> just got a lucky week. I'll never lose to either one of you. <laughs> doesn't play. That's because he you doesn't play fantasy play. football. He never played. So Smart man. Hey, hey, can't lose if you're not even exactly. in the game, my guy. That's right. That's right. Sometimes that's what it's all about. You got to be one <laughs> step ahead. Cutback crew, we hope you enjoyed this 49ers uh, face off. Until next week and until the next one, stay safe. Remember the right way is, is always, always the 49ers way. way. <laughs>